and um, and thanks, Jack, for sort of preaching my little message for me ahead of time, as well. Um, I'm I'm going to actually uh, just read a few well-known verses to you this morning, and then just say a few things about them. Um, they're from the New Testament, from the book of Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 12 verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> it says, "Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses." Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Um, and the first thing just to say, uh, just by way of introduction, is that we don't actually know who wrote the book of Hebrews. Um, and we actually don't even know who the book of Hebrews was written to. Um, and in fact, if you look at the, something Mandy pointed out to me, if you look at the start of the book of Hebrews, there's, no, there's none of the normal introductions that you get in the letters. Um, the letters of Paul or Peter, for example. And um, some people think that this is because the book of Hebrews was written in a time of persecution and the person who wrote it didn't want their name to be at the front. Um, And um, I think almost uh, most of the New Testament letters were written in quite difficult times. But it's pretty obvious from the chapter that whoever it was that was writing, whether a she or a he, um, that they were writing to the church and a group of believers Uh, that were under pressure they were definitely under pressure and put simply the message of those three verses uh, really is very similar to what Jack was saying is keep going don't give up don't give up and whereas Jack's analogy was of of a ship in a storm here the writer of Hebrews is using the analogy of a runner someone in a race and the chapter starts with that very famous verse therefore since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses and of course any uh, any chapter that begins with the word therefore immediately makes you think what has come before and what we see in the previous chapter of course is that the great cloud of witnesses is referring to the list a whole bunch of uh, God's people who are listed um, along with a little snippet of information about how they uh, journeyed with God, a little bit of information about their journey of faith. And really the whole of chapter 11 really is about the journey of faith through the generations. And now, if you like, in some way, the baton has been passed to our generation, to us. And it goes on to say, let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us. And each of us have our own individual journey, don't we? And each of us are on our own individual race. But we have to understand that we're part of something bigger, uh, part of this uh, journey of God's people through the ages. And one day God is going to bring this great race to completion, uh, to perfection, a great consummation. That's the finishing line that we're all heading for, that God's church is heading for. And God is orchestrating this bigger thing uh, through the lives of us as individuals and through his church. Um, And I suppose like the blunt challenge laid before us is how will we run uh, in this generation? How will we run as a people? How will we run as individuals in this generation? And what's so encouraging in these uh, well-known verses is that God is giving us in the Bible a great cloud of witnesses, a great number of examples of people that have run well. And more than that, we have the ultimate example of, of course, of Jesus, who's described in these verses as the pioneer, the perfecter and the founder of our faith. He is the one who's gone before us and he ran the race. He ran the race well. And um, it's on, it's on him that and his example that the writer declares we should keep our eyes fixed and so there's there's this sense in which God has a race marked out for me for Roger Wyatt and there's a faith there's a a sense in which God has this race marked out for you each of you individually 
and there's a finishing line that he has for you to cross. Um, and I believe he has a finishing line for this generation. There's something that God wants to do in this generation that's part of this great momentous journey of the church into the future. And it's, it's a divine endeavor ultimately and the full mystery and wonder of it, we won't see until the end. But there is a bit of a catch in these verses, not, not so much of a catch as a sort of uh, consideration, a reality that we have to get to grips with as we run, as we continue on our own journey of faith, individually and corporately. These three verses tell us that there are some things that are gonna get in the way and prevent us from running well. And he talks about, or she talks about in this verse, that there are things that hinder. And the, the word there is actually weight or burden. There are things that have the potential to weigh us down as we try and run, whether they're worries, circumstances, discouragements, disappointments, um, criticisms, all sorts of things can come in and be a weight in our life and hold us back from running the race as we should. The other thing he says, or she says, is that there are things that entangle us, encircle us, and trip us up. That's the image I got uh, as you think about that runner going along. And, 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 the, and the writer of Hebrews is really clear here and just calls it sin. And it doesn't matter who we are, sin can trip us up. And then the other thing he, he or she talks about is there is sometimes opposition. And sometimes that opposition is from outside of us. It gets in the way of our run with, with God, our walk with God. But also he goes on to talk about the opposition that can come from within us, within our own lives and hearts. And verse four says, talks about in our struggle against sin. So these are, these are the things, the weights, the sin, the opposition that have the capacity to interfere with our faith journey and can bring us to this place that the writer describes where we grow weary and lose heart. And really the, the words in the Greek are a lot stronger. They, they, they really describe this place where that we can reach, where we collapse. Again, thinking about the runner, you know, we, we can collapse, we are spent and we give up and we grow weary in our soul. And we just get this feeling that we just cannot carry on anymore. Um, but the, the great news of this, uh, these three little verses is that these weights can be thrown off. And I believe through prayer, we can get rid of some of these weights from our lives. The sin can be laid aside through confession and forgiveness and the opposition can be resisted. And he actually goes on to say, you've not yet resisted to the point of the shedding of blood. But there are things that we need to resist. And, and all of these things, that's part of our daily walk with God. It's part of us fighting the fight, good fight. It's part of us taking up our cross and following Jesus. And um, there is something, just to finish, there's something hidden away in these verses that I think is really important. And it's the mention of the cross. And it says this of Jesus, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God and what this passage teaches us is that whilst there are some things that can be resisted whilst there are some things that can be laid aside or thrown off there are some things that just have to be endured for which we need perseverance and uh, endure or endurance um, and I, I don't know a lot about running not a lot at all but I'm pretty sure that endurance is something that's really important if you're a runner and uh, that it's something that is built up over years of training years of discipline and I remember uh, a few years ago now I did the three peaks and I remember I just did, had to do so much training months and months of training miles of walking to get me into the sort of shape where I could climb three mountains one after the other and, and in fact, Jack mentioned that word training, and I think it's a really important word. Um, and the writer of Hebrews goes on to tell us, uh, really reveal this wonderful truth to us, that it's in times of pressure that uh, we build spiritual endurance. And I think that's something that we can uh, build in this time that we find ourselves in. We can uh, allow the Lord to train us, discipline us. The, the writer of Hebrews goes on to talk about this and says, no discipline or training is, is an equal translation. Seems pleasant at the time, but painful. 
Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who are trained by it. And so as we pursue Christ uh, individually and corporately, as we follow in his footsteps, as we take up a cross, as we endure through times of pressure, um, those circumstances can be used by God to train us and to bring us strength, to strengthen us in new ways. And in the end, we're told that that training will produce a harvest of righteousness and a harvest of peace. So in this sort of weird COVID time that we're in, I think it's really good to remember that we sometimes we're called upon to endure and persevere. And sometimes we've got to dig deep and find strength to keep running, to keep going forwards, to keep bringing our burdens to God in prayer, to keep um, resisting those things that we need to, to resist and, and prayerfully endure the pressure and keep going. And keep looking at the example of those who've gone before us, that the Bible is full of examples of people that have gone before us and who have persevered and who have endured and in the end found peace and righteousness. But let me just finish with uh, a final a final couple of verses, because all that being said, um, if we do faint, if we do get weary and lose hearts, the good news is there is there's still uh, hope and strength to be found in God. If we're in that place where we just feel completely flat and like we've got no strength left, left Isaiah 40 reassures us and says this, verse 28, that's very much ties in with what David uh, shared. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So I, I really wanted to encourage you this morning, and I'm talking to myself here as much as anyone. I really wanted to encourage you to keep going, um, to understand that God can use these times to bring uh, training into our lives for what the future holds. And there is a, there is a harvest that awaits us as we continue with him. And we, as like Jack said, we hold on to that tiller and we keep going and we keep moving forward. There's a, a harvest of peace and righteousness that's beyond that storm. So let me just pray for you. And then we're going to have a little bit more worship. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for the great example that Jesus is. Lord, you endured. You persevered. You're not asking us to do anything that uh, you haven't done yourself. And I thank you that we have your great example. And Lord, you endured so much more and you faced so much more. And, and yet, Lord, you crossed that finishing line and you said on the cross, it is finished. And um, we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we each have our journey to run. We each have uh, a plan that you've marked out for us. And Lord, as we move ahead in these coming weeks, I pray that you would just pour into our hearts new strength to keep going, Lord. New, new levels of uh, strength and endurance and perseverance as we uh, continue on our journey of faith, Lord. And I pray that for us as a church as well. I pray, Lord, you would strengthen us as a church, that we wouldn't find ourselves sort of flagging in the ditch in this time, Lord God, but that we would go from strength to strength as we uh, follow you, Lord, we follow in your footsteps. And I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray for a blessing on every single person here, Lord, every single person watching, that they would know your presence and know your strengthening at this time. In Jesus' name. Amen. Storms may come and the winds may blow. Our pain 
to the ground. 
my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. to the setting same I will praise your name great is your faith 